the all-new Deadpool's head. Click to pre-order yours today. 1-833-DPS-HEAD. That number again, 1-833-DPS-H-E-A-D. Hey, Hulk Talk 2. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and it's another week of toys. But before we get into the actual news, I have to go through some corrections from last week. Y'all were nice enough to tell me that I may have been wrong in a couple of instances, and that's okay, because you were nice about it. Uh, <laughs> as long as you're not starting your sentence with, um actually then i am completely good with somebody telling me that i messed up because i tend to miss stuff i get excited and i'm just like ah look at this stuff i gotta talk about it and then i come back and it's like oh <laughs> last week we talked about the listing on smith's toys in the uk for the aew ring with cody and i stated that it was the first solicitation we'd seen of the jazzware stuff completely forgetting about ringside collectibles and their aew pre-orders even having a ring themselves with their own exclusive kenny omega i've talked about it several times before i love wrestling i watch a lot of wrestling i follow the news on wrestling but for some reason i don't really get into the toys maybe because there's so much out there that if i did start that collection now whoo <laughs> but I do pick up things that catch my eye, and with Jazzwares AEW line starting soon, it, that's ground floor. I can get in at the first. But someone did confirm that the ring with Cody is a Smith's Toys exclusive. Someone also pointed out that the Earth designations for the newly solicited McFarlane Toys Dark Knights metal figures from last week, they're all negative numbers. Now, I don't know why I feel the need to correct myself here, other than the fact that McFarlane actually listed them with the negatives in front of the numbers. My Arkansas ass looked at those last week and said, boy, howdy, them dashes sure are weird. So this is more of a redemption thing, proving that I can read, I just get confused sometimes. Dashes. <laughs> To touch on another something from last week, <laughs> buckle up because there's a couple more after this too, but the solicited and now sold out Mezco 112th Collective 1978 Superman had some wackiness going on after it was posted. This picture was shown when the solicitation was first posted, but then this picture started floating around showing a yellow S on the back of the cape. When I saw that and people were talking that it was added to the solicitation, I went back, never saw this picture, but then I found this picture and it also had the yellow S added because when the solicitation first went up, I saved this picture. I'm guessing the final product will have the yellow S because they were trying their damnedest to put that picture into the solicitation after it was posted. Why pull back the other one or maybe my browser cache wasn't replacing it or something. I feel like without reaching out to the, I guess I could have just asked, huh? Instead of, oh, it's a big mystery. But I have a strong suspicion that the final product will have the yellow S. We also learned of the Tamashi Features 2020 exclusive SH Figure Arts Iron Man Mark III repaint last week. And now that I string all those words together, anyone who's not a fan of toys and or imports <laughs> probably sounds like a wacky sentence. Anyway, this week we were treated to a review on the Tamashi Cinema site of this figure showing off the new paint job and all the scuffs. As someone who doesn't own the first release of the SH Figure Arts Iron Man Mark III, I'm surprised at how different it actually is with the different shades and the wear on it. Since this is a virtual online show, I'm... <laughs> The way I understand it, I think it's working like a Soul Web exclusive where it's only available through their site for a limited amount of time. But I don't know how many there is to go around because the window is only open for four hours today and then the product ships July 2nd. I guess that's so people overseas will have it in hand for the show that actually starts July 4th. So it may be available through third parties like most Soul Web exclusives, but Hmm, I don't know how available it will be. Bandai also announced re-releases of their SH Figure Arts Sailor Moon line, or at least a few of them. Their Sailor Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, and of course Sailor Moon. Now I don't know much about Sailor Moon. In fact, I know less about Sailor Moon than most of the stuff I talk about not knowing on here. But quick research, most of these figures were released around 2015, somewhere in there. And looking at Amazon, I didn't go too deep, but it seems that the prices on a lot of them are way up there. But the reissues are repainted to be more animation accurate, where the colors are bolder, richer, deeper. I feel like they look better comparing to the old ones. But I don't know, that's just someone on the outside looking in going, oh, those colors, hmm, 
they do. If you order them from overseas, they'll be $43 release in October. But if you go to Amazon right now, they are $56 and will release in January. Hey, we also talked about the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie two packs last week, where we saw new package shots of the Turtle Boys. But this week, Walmart put up placeholder listings for which ones? The Raph and Mikey two pack, the Foot Soldier Army Builder two pack, and then Super Shredder. And then Randy on Twitter posted a tentative schedule for all of their Walmart releases, at least the ones we know so far. Movie Casey Jones with Raph in disguise should start hitting next week next week huh hmm. the turtle two packs will be july the foot soldiers pack with weapons rack is september and then splinter and shredder is in the fall but like i said he also hints at stuff that we don't know about coming later in the year whole lot of turtle hunting in the foreseeable future the coffin comics lady death by loose collector and executive replicas it's a go. It was mentioned when the pre-orders went up for Lady Death that the future depended on how many orders they actually get, and apparently they got enough orders. But look forward to that in the winter. Pre-orders are still open, so you can go to Coffin Comics or Executive Replicas and put your pre-orders in. Plunderlings! It's been a while! There was a Kickstarter update on the progress on these this week, and oh, hot dog, they're looking good. Still some changes to be made, like the paint work, the spray on the knees, they're working to make it less harsh, a little more subtle where it blends in better. So if you see anything in these pictures, and there are a lot of pictures, I'll be posting that to the Foosh front page this weekend. But if you see something that's off that you remember from the Kickstarter, they're working on it. This is a work in progress. The factory does something, it sends it in, they make changes, send it back to the factory, the factory has to make changes back and forth. You'll also notice the Fawns making an appearance here. They didn't get unlocked in the Kickstarter, but they liked them so much they went ahead and produced them. Those should be for sale in the future when these actually get produced. But if you're wanting to put a pre-order in on any of the other plunderlings, that's available on Big Bad Toy Store right now. Lim Toys should be shipping out their Ahab any day now, at least I hope so, because I need a Metal Gear Solid Snake on my shelf. I mean Ahab. But as that project gets wrapped up, they decided to post a little teaser of what may be coming next. 1998, Claire, Umbrella, Leon, hmm. I think these were debuted at Toy Fair, but Previews Magazine has shown a teaser of the upcoming Diamond Select Lord of the Rings figures. It was originally reported that Wave 1 is Gimli and Legolas, which is already up for pre-order. Wave 2 would be Aragorn and Nazgul, followed by Frodo and an orc. And all of those would come with pieces to build a 13-inch Sauron. But showing these together, plans may have changed, or this is just a teaser for future figures. Either way, this is one step closer to pre-orders for those. Super 7 snuck out a pre-order this week for their ultimate iconic pose Conan. And at first, when I saw the picture, I'll admit it, I was kind of thrown off by the bubbliness. Using the old mass, <laughs> old, <laughs> using the Masters of the Universe classics aesthetic for a live action property, it, it it's weird to me. But then I adjust my thinking to it being the new Ultimates aesthetic and I don't know, in that setting with standing all next to the other Ultimates figures, I can see it a lot better. But then I ran across this pic and the, <laughs> the head that is on the figure in the first picture makes a lot more sense. I figured it was wind blown back, but it just looked odd. You know, you with me? It still needs an up and down hitch on the wrist because all sword and gun hands should be up and down. And the shoulders look a little bit big without the fur covering of the first release of this Conan, but I will admit it looks better in action. But then I came back to the pictures later and I thought right off the bat, without thinking too much, because I'm not known for thinking too much, it's kind of an animated style Arnold Conan. How's that? Because with an alternate head with hair down, extra hands, and then a big honking sword. $45 scheduled to release early 2021. So we've already seen early figures leak of the Hasbro Deadpool Legends Strong Guy Wave, and last week I was so desperate to talk about anything Legends that we talked about the artwork on the package by artist David Nakayama. So this week, Here's the official promotional images for the card backs. Marvel Legends! Yup, the same characters I've been rambling about for the past few weeks, just from a different angle, from the back. There's Black Tom and Blue Deadpool and Maverick and Pirate Deadpool and Shikla with Jeff and Sunspot and finally Warpath. Maybe next week I'll show pictures of the bottom where we can see the UPC and all the legalese, you know the really exciting stuff. Back around Toy Fair time on Amazon UK, a listing popped up 
for a Transformers War for Cybertron. I don't know why I was looking at my hand. There's no cheat sheet here. A Transformers War for Cybertron alternate universe Optimus Prime. No description, just a listing and a picture of some Nerf darts. Over the past few weeks, pictures have leaked out from a Malaysian Facebook group showing an Earthrise Optimus Prime in a grayscale color scheme some battle damage, much like he looked in the 80s movie after Hot Rod killed him. That's right, I said Hot Rod killed him. Also, uh, spoiler alert for a 35 year old movie. Recently, even some YouTube reviews have popped up and it is indeed a newly sculpted head. We get a better look at that. It looks fantastic. Some battle damage here and there. And then this week we learn that this Optimus Prime is an Amazon exclusive for Prime Day on July 15th. Ooh, Prime on Prime Day. I just made it sound like a porn. It's a one-off that's not essential to the collection, but the Earthrise mold is so good that it may be worth having again, even in dead Optimus flavor. That sounds dirty too, or illegal. Hasbro has revamped and reopened their G.I. Joe site, and there's a lot of stuff to look at here. Timelines, history, movies, cartoons, comics, anything you want to know about G.I. Joe, but most interesting to our corner of the universe is the specialties and character sections. There's a section that actually explains the icons that we've seen on the side of the G.I. Joe classified series packaging, ranging from roles to gear to specialties, and if you hover over any of the icons, it explains the item and who uses it. That's connected to the character pages, and this is where the speculation can go wild. Both the Joe and Cobra pages have a handful of characters listed, and it makes you feel like... <laughs> there's a potential for any of these in the line. And then if you click on any of the characters, you get a more classic styled file card for those of you who missed that. Like I just learned, Chuckles is from Little Rock. Hasbro, if you ever need somebody to voice our favorite deep cover agent, I may know somebody. I scroll through the characters on both of these pages and I can't help wanting all of them in plastic form. They're all good. Oddly enough, they removed Sand Scorpion from the page after it was posted. It was there? and then it was gone. But again, this is all speculation. Just because it's listed here doesn't mean it's gonna get made into figure form. The characters that are already known to be in plastic form are updated with that new package style artwork, while the rest pull pictures from other media like the cartoons, the card backs, the comics. Then there's a few that have that updated artwork that haven't been announced as figures, but they're no surprises because we've seen them in other places. Like on the poster, we saw the Alley Viper and the Red Ninja. Baroness looks slightly different than that original poster look, but it does match the image we saw on the Malaysian Adventure Camp Facebook page that was pulled down right after they posted these images. That's also where we first saw Storm Shadow with his tattoos on the arm, his techie looks, and now with the website up, they've posted more different images of that same concept. The chances of these being made into figures is much higher than the rest, be just because they've been updated. But you'll notice I left someone out. That's right, this week, the G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Commander was revealed, and whoo, the drama surrounding this figure is so diabolical that you would think that Cobra Commander himself was behind it. It started with the initial reveal on IGN, confirming our suspicions that the figure would look like the poster artwork. It's an updated look like the rest of the line, but it's still a regal militaristic looking uniform that just oozes pompous and arrogant. And the weapons look useless, like they're just there for show. He was in a dollar store and saw it in a shitty glass case and went, it has snakes. Even the artwork on the Joe site shows him holding it all funky preferring to show off the tacky serpent sculpt rather than hold it like a weapon and actually hurt somebody. Feelings were mixed, some love it, some like it, some hate it, but that's the name of the game when it comes to this line and the internet in general. Then it was announced that it would be available on an app called The Network, which apparently has been around for a while. They sell clothing and, and Funkos and other things, and it was even used for last year's Ghostbusters Optimus Prime drop. Still, it was kind of weird to be directed towards an app that asks for your phone number before you can even download it. And I get it, Hasbro wants to reach as many people as possible. That's why some reveals are on IGN and, and other non-toy related sites and even a network app that sells clothes. But it's a toy I wanted, so still all my info, shady, valve-fearing phone app. But to add to the confusion, the network posted pictures of a light blue Cobra Commander with gold accents that was different from the initial reveal from Hasbro. Wait, is this an exclusive? What's going on here? But the app said that this would release in September 
and it would be available through other retailers too. So I wasn't too worried about the whole thing. If I got it, I got it. If I didn't, I didn't. And this is convoluted as shit, so here we go. The night before, the network tweeted that the release is actually the dark blue Cobra Commander that Hasbro originally showed. But they were sent a sample of the light blue Cobra Commander that nobody knows where it came from, and that's the only thing they had to take pictures of. Well, okay, you tweeted that. Why didn't you say that in the app? Still, it's a toy I wanted. I put in all my information, my credit card number, my address. I pushed the notify me button saying, oh yeah, tell me when this drop is about to happen. An hour before the drop, an email was sent out from the network, still showing the light blue Cobra Commander and calling it a special edition. <laughs> Okay. 7 p.m. rolls around, the dumb countdown gets down to zero, the button pops up, and then there's a video of a guy playing with the light blue Cobra Commander. Like, oh, this is what we're getting. Cool. Purchase. 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 Shipping. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Failed. I tried again, still spinning. I look down, this product is verified by network. Whoo, that makes me feel confident. Like I said, I wasn't too worried about it, so I thought, I'll go look at my profile, and the app had deleted all my information. It couldn't get shipping info because there was no shipping info. So I put all that back in, go back, hit it a couple more times, it says sold out. Again, I'm not mad. I'll get it when it releases everywhere else, apparently. But for Hasbro to hook up with this app that barely works because I did see posts of people getting it, but then I saw posts of people getting several and not knowing it because the confirmation never popped up until later after they tried again after thinking it failed. But there was a whole lot more posts of people going, ah, this does not work. Ah. I mean, does the network app have so much potential to bring in non-toy buying customers that it's worth this clusterfuck? When Hasbro has retail partners and other distributors that spend way more money with them yearly to get that out there. Hell, there's Pulse too! Just throw it on Pulse! On top of that, if you don't have Twitter, you're just on the network, you think you're buying a light blue Cobra Commander, and you get a dark blue Cobra Commander, or several, in case you push the button a couple more times. The app does state that colors and design may vary, but it also states no refunds and no returns. Oh, and the notify me button? <laughs> I got that notification two hours after the drop. Uh, My wild guess, the network doesn't know jack about toys. Hasbro sent them a sample with probably instructions saying that this is not, this is just an example and Network just went, hey, look, toy. What I can take from this, that there is a light blue with gold Cobra Commander on the horizon somewhere. Hasbro already had it produced, so that can only make me think that this is a summer exclusive of some kind. The dark blue Cobra Commander is said to come out in September, not like we're seeing a bunch of toys that were meant for the fall popping up right now anyway, but I don't know, there's just that feeling, and I may have it completely backwards. Maybe the dark blue is an exclusive of some kind, and the light blue is the regular release, and who knows. All I know is that I'll be happy with one or the other, but I kind of want both, because dark blue feels like commanding the troops back home in the headquarters, and the light blue feels like the old cartoon, or he's out in a Cobra parade all... Ah, snakes! Okay, this has went on too long. Next Friday, the 26th, Fan First Friday will be dedicated to G.I. Joe, so maybe we'll hear more about the next wave, maybe some, you know, clarification on the Cobra Commander situation, and maybe the retro line that's three and three quarter inch. All I know is I need a Cobra Commander to point at things, slightly to the side, or at Destro. Who packed my luggage? And that's it for this week. If you like the shirt, it will be available on taxhf.ca. You can put your pre-order in there, get your shirt. I have as many shirts as I have toys anymore. I didn't talk about the Deadpool head because it's not an actual action figure, but it's a fun little thing. I saw all kinds of posts from people all, I'm getting really sick of Deadpool, or this isn't an action figure. Here's a novel idea. If you don't like a luxury item that's not catered to your specific wants and needs, you can completely ignore it and go over and look at stuff that you do enjoy. But some people just enjoy misery, so. My wife came home that day from her job as a nurse and said, we're getting that Deadpool head because that looks fun. What is fun? Hmm. It's not the act of disliking something. 
It's the act of only talking about shit you don't like. So if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. That's right, I did it backwards this time. If you're interested in videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Foosh. <laughs> you know, going back to Cobra Commander for a second, because I cannot get it out of my head. I, I need that figure. But the light blue also matches the artwork, for the most part, with the gold. So, who knows? Is it even a thing? I mean, it may be just a one-off. It may be just a prototype. All I know is I just need a Cobra Commander. <laughs>